Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Dhamma meeting where we will discuss the Buddhist practices of charity, morality, and meditation. Everyone is welcome to join. We will start with our first participant, which happens to be Gig Yenso from Penang. Gig. Can you hear me, Gig? Yes. I mute your microphone. Hi, Tanajan. Good night. How are you? Good, thank you. Yeah, good, yeah. No question, Tanajan. Okay. Go to Jordan. Hi, Jordan. How's your second week in Thailand, in Bangkok? Hi, Tanajan. Um, it's uh, it's going okay. The school is uh, moving a little too quickly for me. Uh, <clears throat> it's a different. Uh, it's from very cold to very hot now. Definitely, yeah. I caught a bit of a cold, uh, but um, yeah, I was hoping you wouldn't ask me to say anything in Thai yet. Sawadikap. Sawadikap. Kapkun kap. This is the two words you should learn first of all in Thai. I know, I know those ones. <laughs> um, yeah. Bye bye, Dikap. Bye bye, Dikap. Kapkun kap. So, uh, oh. uh, everything's fine. Um, I, I'm keeping up my practice and uh, um, taking eight precepts this week to try to. Uh, Try to just get into a good rhythm. How many hours you have to study a day? Uh, uh, three hours in class, and then uh, I, I probably need to study about four hours out of class. But is it usually at least only to keep up? It, <laughs> is only verbal, uh, verbal, or, or, or reading also, reading and writing? Reading and writing is another course that comes later. I see. And now just learning how to speak Thai. Yeah? That's right. Uh, basics we're working on uh, how to uh, give directions to a taxi driver. Do you have many foreigners attending your class in the same class you're attending? Uh, yeah, there, there are a couple of people from Japan and someone from New Zealand um, and someone from France, someone, uh, two people from, from China. I see. Wow. Okay, good. Do you do you converse with them? Uh, we we practice uh, speaking in Thai, but they all speak English. So that's good. Mm -hmm. But uh, it doesn't. I guess it doesn't help. I I need to really be immersed to uh, so I don't have a choice but to speak Thai. You have to be among the Thais in order to speak Thai. Yes. Maybe okay. I should just go right to a, a, a monastery that where no one speaks English. Yeah. On the weekend you're free. You, you you're free to go anywhere you like, right? For the weekend. Yes. Saturday and mm -hmm. Sunday I'll have off. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I still uh, have yet to go and and uh, and visit any temples in in Bangkok to see if I could possibly uh, live at one. Uh, I want to do that before I get an apartment. I'm just waiting till I get over this cold and then you know, I'll go uh, to maybe to what? Bowon? What Bowon? Yeah, but it used to be foreigners staying there. There are some foreign monks. You might be able to talk to them and maybe they will uh, add you, put you in as, you, as, as the, what you call, disciple or luxi. Okay. To stay there as a lay person. Yes. Keep the eight okay. precepts. And maybe they help 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 do some chores for the monk. And uh, oh, that would be perfect. You might be you might even be allowed to eat the food left over from the monk. Maybe. So yeah, that can save you a lot of money. Definitely. And it could keep me out of trouble. Yeah. 
because in, in, in the temple it's much more quieter than living outside. Yeah. Yeah, what exactly. one is a good place to, to try? Before okay. I was ordained, I stayed there for about three or four weeks, three weeks as a layman. And I helped the mom wash his bowl and you know clean his uh, mop his kuti and, and give me wow. he gave me the food left over from from his arms round and he had a small room that allowed me to stay. And oh wow. Okay. That sounds good to me, yeah. Okay, I'll I'll definitely go and uh, uh go there soon. Yeah, and ask around to see if I can find an and, and, English speaker. And find yeah, find an English mom uh, foreign foreign uh, foreign mom westerners. I think there's some in, there's still some I think there's an American there and an Englishman there. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. That's hopeful. Let's just ask around. <clears throat> I think it's a pretty big place, huh? No, really, it's, 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 it's uh, you know, it's, okay. I would say it's big, but it's not small, and, uh, you know. Okay. It's a, it's a large compound, consisted of many buildings. Okay. Well, I'll just go and ask around. Okay. Where do you stay now? Is it which part of Bangkok are you stay in? Uh, I'm staying in uh, uh, Nana. Oh, no, no. Yeah. So cool area. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's close to all hostel. the hostel here. Yeah. That's close to all the, the, the tourist places. Yeah, it is. It's also close to my school. That's why I, I chose this place. But this yeah. area I live in is, is uh, it's, my hostel is quiet, but <laughs> this area is very, uh, there's a lot of partying. And, yeah, it's an uh, entertainment sort of place. Yeah. Yeah, but Wat Bowan is quite away from where you where you are now. But you can probably take the the metro. And the, the no train problem. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, ben Shakisti uh, Park is is here. It's very nice. I I go there and practice and. Uh, yeah. Study. It's, a, it's a large park. Really. It's beautiful there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, Okay, Tanajan, thank you very much. I, I don't have a question today. Yeah. Yeah. Keep up with your practice along with your study, okay? Okay, I will. Thank you. Okay, all right. Next is Professor Ken from Switzerland. So, Adikap, Ajahn. Adikap. Wani, my me come tam. My me come tam, no question. Speak Thai, good Thai, get mad. นิดหน่อยนิดหน่อยนิดหน่อยใช่มั้ยอืมสาธุสาธุขอบคุณครับอาจารย์โอเคอังโกตุคอกเซงคอกเซง is coming to Thailand also he made a reservation to stay with us on uh, on Kaochiyon he staying on Kaochiyon or down below I I just choose the the main temple below yeah uh oh. yeah I think I'm still not ready to stay at the mountain. Okay. Good. So maybe uh when I'm more uh develop more confidence, then I may uh so-called uh uh venture to stay at the mountain in the future. Yeah. So I think for the first visit, maybe I will just stay at a main temple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Linda and Gary just, just came and left a few days ago. I see. They're also from Singapore. Yeah, I know that. Okay, you got any questions tonight? Uh, no questions at the moment. Thank you, Prajan. Okay, go to Switzerland again, to Claudia. Claudia. Namasakang ka? Namasakang, that's also a Thai word. Yeah, this is what um, one of my teachers taught me before he left to Thailand when I was still in Germany. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, um, I have a question today. 
So can Tana Chan please explain to me the difference between the fourth jhana and an out of body experience in meditation? Well, in, in meditation, you can have different types of uh, concentration uh, or calm or jhana. If you're in the jhana, you don't have any outer experience. There's a, it's another type called upajara samadhi, which you have to access first the jhana. Once you got to the fourth jhana, normally for most people, they will remain in fourth jhana. But for some, 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 some person who has been trained to access the out of this world, the psychic world, can can exit from the fourth jhana and go into the to the psychic world and ex be able to communicate with the spiritual beings, like the Buddha when he gave Dhamma talks, he has to use this type of um, of samadhi of meditation. This this also will en enable you to have psychic powers, like the ability to recollect your past lives be able to read the mind of other people, what they're thinking. But this has only happened to very few meditators. From what I understand, from what I heard from the teacher, usually about 5% of meditators will have this special ability. Like the story of Kunmak Gao, Machi Gao, if you, if you ever read or listened to her biography, she had this special gift. But it can be a common hindrance because you 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 will become more or less addicted to this type of uh, meditation because it gives you sort of a power and ability that no uh, no other people can have. But it's not the samadhi. It's not the type of meditation that will support your your practice of vipassana or enlightenment or wisdom. So if you happen to have this ability and every time you meditate, you go into this out of this world experience, you will be just wasting your time because you will not have the, the ubeka that you can gain from the fourth jhana to use to resist your cravings. Your mind will be weak as if you haven't did any meditation. This, so, is, this is very clear. Yeah. So if you couldn't met she girl, she was always she was always reminded by a long time Mahabo to stop going to this type of meditation because it's <clears throat> it, it, it doesn't support her, her path to enlightenment. But she kept she kept resisting, she kept doing it until long time Mahabo have to give her the ultimatum that if you don't stop, then I'm not going to be your teacher anymore. So that's when she, she knew that was serious. So she stopped and, and then just maintain her, her mind in the, in the fourth jhana. And when after coming out of the fourth jhana, she then can investigate the, the three characteristics of existence like death and the supa. <clears throat> and then eventually be able to overcome her cravings for being and not being, craving for sensual pleasure, for instance. This is very clear. So thank you very much for this very important explanation. Thank you. So if you should have this, try to restrain your mind. Wait until after you become enlightened. Then you can then go into this special type of meditation because you can then help other people. Especially it happened, this... only, yeah, it, it happened oh. only one time in the year 2010, and I didn't force it, but I just wanted to get sure that I don't confuse it with the first jhana and think, oh, great, this was the first jhana because I think it wasn't the first jhana, but it happened only one time. No, the first jhana will 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 mean you are focusing on your meditation object, whether your breath or your mantra. This is the first first when you become fully absorbed in 
in in focusing on your meditation object when you are in the first first jhana. Thank you very much. This is very helpful. From what I hear, normally you have to pass the fourth jhana. You have to get to the fourth jhana before you can then enter into the psychic world. <clears throat> yeah. And I don't intend to enter the psychic world, so this is not my my goal. So my goal is to yes. get more calm. Uh, calm. To, to, to know ahead of time, because sometimes it sometimes can be automatic if you already have this ability. Once you get to the fourth channel, then you will automatically exit into the psychic world. But now that you know, then maybe it's like a, you have a warning. You have something to to remind you not to go into that direction yet. Not this time. Not now. Anyway, yeah. you can you can use psychic power after you have become enlightened, and assist teaching other people, especially the spiritual beings. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I don't force it at all. So my goal is to get the mind more and more calm and. I have the strength to re have the strength to resist your craving. That's what you want. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Good. Thank you so much. And some of this might not be be, be actual psychic power. Maybe it's just our imagination when we meditate. A lot of people could be fooled by some 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 things that appear in the meditation and thought this mm -hmm. is psychic power. So be very careful. Whatever appears in your meditation, you should not uh, see them as important. You should treat them as uh, temporarily um, phenomenon, natural ph mental, mental phenomenon. They come and go, they are nija, they are not that, they're not under your control. But if you become uh, immersed or become uh, Fascinated by them, you can be become attached, and eventually you can get dukkha yeah. when you cannot access it again later on. So don't very, don't, very don't yeah don't be fa be fascinated by anything that appears when you meditate. It just means your mind start to fabricate or manufacture these things to to deceive you or to distract your focus on your meditation. So come back to your meditation object whenever you feel you're being distracted by things that appear in your meditation. This is very helpful. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'll go to New Zealand now, to Anura and Ramia. Okay. So the crowd, yeah. Buddy. Uh, like, like Claudia said, when you when you address the mom, you should say Namaskar. Namaskar. Oh, yeah. So yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Yeah. We started okay. learning yeah. a bit of Thai from YouTube. Well, we are traveling to Thailand next week, so just quite yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah. You say Namaskar, Jan. Namaskar, Ante. Yeah, yeah Namaskar, Jan. <laughs> 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 um, then a question the image the I heard that some Thai forest monks have abhinya, so is it same as psychic power? So that's right, that's right. Abhinya means psychic power, and they have to access the type of samadhi called upachara samadhi, which is not jhana, beyond jhana. <clears throat> But some in the some people who study the scripture they interpret Upachara Samadhi mean before you get to jhana. So yeah. this can be confusing among with with meditators we 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 say it is beyond jhana, but with uh, scripture study people they say it's like before you get to jhana. But anyway, it it, it just not, it's a different type. It's not jhana. And it's not useful for your practice yeah. for vipassana. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So do these uh, 
the, the correspondence with Abinya. So do they do they stay in Jhana or they are staying outside Jhana? Oh, when they when they practice for for enlightenment, they they stay in Jhana. But only after they became enlightened, like Ajahn Man, then he sometimes teach the spiritual beings by using this type of of, mm. of samadhi. Ajahn Man has this apinya or psychic power. He could read the mind of other people, and he could also connect with the spiritual beings. If you study his biography, written by Ajahn Mahabur, I think you... Yeah. The story about his ability. Yeah. 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 He even be he was even able to communicate with past Buddhas and past Arahants. Yeah. And this could be for some people they could be skeptical and say, How could this happen? Yeah. But you know, this is something that you have to experience it yourself to really yeah. 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 understand. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> If you don't, don't if you don't experience it, just forget it. Just don't worry yeah, about yeah. it. It's not important. Yeah, <clears throat> your main goal is to stay quiet, empty, empty your mind, keep your mind still, be peaceful and happy, and not reacting to anything. This is the goal of preparing your mind for for vipassana practice. <clears throat> Okay. okay. Yeah, thank you, Tangaja. Thank you. So how long will be your trip in Thailand? Um about three and a half weeks. Three and a half weeks, yeah. Three and a half weeks, yeah. So with Ajahn Brahm leading the, the group or not? Uh the that same group. So not Ajahn Brahm is not traveling, but uh mm -hmm. Ajahn Api, another monk, the second monk. Mm -hmm. And from, the, from Perth, from Perth. Yes. From Perth, yeah. We are joining in Singapore, we fly from here to Singapore and then we join the group. I see. And I, I think we, we, uh, we will be paying respect to you on Saturday. We will be there. So we do you have your Dhamma talk on Saturday after. Is that right, John? This coming, this coming Saturday? Uh, 17th. Oh, 17th. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the week after. Yeah, every weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and Buddhist yeah. observance day, I'll give yes. Dhamma talk about 2 p.m. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Is it in Thai or in? Yes, Thai? in Thai. But uh, but after I finish the Thai talk, then we, and if we have any foreigners, we can then communicate in English afterwards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we would like to see Vakyam as well. So, and after that, we travel to Korat, Ajanganas Monastery. We stay there for three days and then there are so many crew by Jans that we are planning to respect and so with teachings yeah that's the plan yeah that's good that's good yeah so you can see the different types the different monastery yes. <clears throat> and it's so inspiring for us so maybe one day we we want to come and stay in what yeah no yeah you're welcome yeah you're welcome yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank um, you. Thank do you have that. any Thank other you. question? Ajahn, Ajahn, hi, Ajahn. So listen to it here half. That means listen with the peaceful mind, as well. Listen of seeing with your heart. I I can't quite hear you. Can you speak louder? So that's it. Listen or see from your heart. Some, you some, yeah, some forest monks they say, yeah. listen with your heart, right? That's yes. what it is. Yes. Been, it, been, it, it means you have to pay attention to what you hear, not letting your mind go thinking about other things. Mm. Then, whatever is spoken to you, you will then be able to absorb into your heart, your mind. Mm. Sometimes we listen, but we we hear, but we don't listen. You know, we hear the sound, but our mind is thinking about something else. Something else. Yeah. So, so when you listen to Dhamma talk, you have to pay attention, close attention. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
listen to every word and not let, allow your mind to go think about other things at the same time. <clears throat> this is the one that the Buddha mentioned in the Bahia Sutta. So in one Sutta, the Buddha has said to Bahia to listen, see with your eyes, hear with your ear. Yeah, that's a teaching. Right? Is that correct, Ajahn? No, he means what you what you see, just merely see. What you hear, just see. merely yeah, hear. Yeah. Don't react, don't interpret. Yeah. Just know yeah. it's just sound, just know it's images, but it does it isn't human or whatever. This our this is our delusion interpretation yeah, of what we see, we hear. Yeah. In fact, they are just phenomena that comes and go. Oh, yeah. okay. But you need a, a mind like Ube, you have to have a, a mind with Ubeka to yeah. be able to just merely see, merely hear. <clears throat> Normally, your mind will, if you don't have a big car, your mind will automatically interpret what you see, what you hear, mm -hmm. and then react accordingly. If it's a good image, you react with cravings, mm -hmm. with, you know, with attraction. If, you, if it's a bad image, you re react with a negative reaction. You want to just merely not, not just merely observing, merely knowing, and not reacting. Then your mind will be free, will be safe from from dukkha. Mm -hmm. As soon as you react with with uh, with cravings or desire, then you're creating agitation in your mind, and that's dukkha. Mm -hmm. You want to maintain your mind to be calm all the time, regardless of what, what you see or what you hear. So is that after four jhana with the upachara samadhi, is it? No, you just just the fourth jhana. You, you need to have just the fourth jhana to, to have ubeka, equanimity. Mm. Then when you come out of jhana, you still maintain this equanimity within your, your mind. So when you see something, you 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 don't react to them like you normally would. Yeah. If you have no equanimity when you see something you like, you want it. You you, you want to you want to grab that thing. You want to have it. When you see something you don't like, you want to get rid of it. Yeah. But if you have equanimity, you just need to see. Yeah. You know. Right? You know it's good or bad, but you have no reaction, no reaction toward those what you see. Mm -hmm. So then uh, you have the protection from the danger as well. If you yeah, that means you're very still. Like, um, yeah, just speak closer to this. Yeah, yeah speak closer to the screen because I. Mm -hmm. So if someone is in that stage, they have the protection from the. From outside, like if there's a tiger or something in the danger, so they have protection as well, is it? So, Ajahn? Yeah. Ajahn's muted. I'm sorry. My my connection got disconnected, yeah. so I, I didn't hear what you say. So you have to repeat what you said again, please. So that person, uh, if, if he, it's that person in Fort Jana, he, he has the protection from outside as well. Well, no danger. Yeah. No, the danger can only happen to the body, but the mind. <clears throat> will not be affected by whatever happens to, to the body. <clears throat> but it is, it, it is brief, you know, with, with the fourth jhana, equanimity that you get from the fourth jhana is not permanent. Mm -hmm. After you come out of jhana for a while, this will eventually dissipate or disappear. So you have to go back into jhana again to regenerate this, this equanimity. But if you use wisdom, then you can maintain equanimity without having to go into the jhana after you come out. Mm -hmm. 
Wisdom is to see everything as anicca, dukkha, manatta, <clears throat> and to let go and not to have any attachment or, re or reaction toward them. <clears throat> Because they call, they can only cost you dukkha. So, so in that state, the person klesa is not active, right? It's, it's so subsidized. No klesa, is that correct? In what? In what? What? What state? It, when 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 a person is just out of jhana and uh, in upeka. So his defilements are, or glaciers are all subsidized, not appearing. <clears throat> uh, when when you it's like putting water into a ice box. When you take the the water from the ice box, it will stay cool, temperate for a while, but it will slowly become warm, warmer. It's the same way with the mind. When you meditate into the fourth jhana, your mind will be calm and have equanimity. When you have equanimity, the defilement cannot work, cannot function. <clears throat> but when you come out of meditation, your mind will gradually lose this equanimity. Then your defilement will start to emerge again. See, the jhana doesn't eliminate the defilement, only suppress the defilement. If you want to eliminate the defilement completely, you have to use wisdom or vipassana, which is to see everything as anicca, dukkha, anatta. Then you will not react to anything. <clears throat> Understand? That's very, yeah, that's very clear. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, see, before the Buddha became enlightened, people used jhana as a way of protecting their mind. After they come up from jhana, the mind can be afflicted by the defilement again, with dukkha again. And they don't know how to, to stop this uh, affliction, this dukkha, when they are not in jhana. The Buddha wanted to find a way of getting rid of this dukkha while not in jhana. So he has to investigate and compare what between when the mind is in jhana and not in jhana, what is the difference? And he realized that the difference is that when you're in jhana, the craving, the defilement is not working. And when you come out of jhana, the, the cravings or the defilement start to work again. And when the craving or defilement start to work, dukkha arises. So he discovered the Four Noble Truths that way. <clears throat> So he say all my all my craving, all my duk all my dukkha comes from my craving. So if I stop my craving, and the way to stop my craving is to tell it that whatever I crave for, they are all they are not good because they are temporary. They are nicha, they are anatta, you cannot keep force to do what you want all the time. <clears throat> so when you see this with wisdom, then you you have no desire for anything. Because what you go after, you will get you are, you can only keep it temporarily. Sooner or later you will lose it again. Okay. Thank you, Kapaja. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm not sure why my connection is like this tonight. It just went off and come back on again. So I was talking to Trevor. Trevor, it's your turn to speak. Can you hear me? Can you unmute your microphone? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, uh, good morning. Uh, uh, good evening to you. And uh, so nice to, to hear your voice again. I. Uh, and and to see Jordan looking so happy and uh, 
uh, relaxed. I, I honestly, I, I don't think I've seen him looking so so uh, so, so radiant. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> very 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 happy. Um, very interesting talking this morning. I, I, I'm I was uh, I was here since eight, but I guess I forgot to turn my camera on. But uh, I, I I'm reading this uh, book. Uh, one of the books written uh, by by Ajahn Mahabua, uh, the Venerable Ajahn Kao, Kao, Kao? Biography. biography. Yeah, the biography. A true spiritual warrior, Kao, and and I. Yes. Ajahn Kao and, is uh, Mr. Longda Mahabu's contemporary. They both the disciple of Ajahn Man. <clears throat> of Ajahn Man, yes, and. Uh, I'm really enjoying it, um, and uh, but I, I was especially the story about how he was speaking to to the elephants. Yes. I, I hope I hope you still have elephants. Oh yeah, we in, still have lots of elephants in Thailand. Oh, <clears> that's <throat> that's great. I was telling Jordan that learning. Learning Thai is is like um, e you know eating a, a, an elephant. You have to you know take mm -hmm. it one 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 bite at a time. You know. Anyway, I uh, one small spoonful at a time. I uh, but I was interested in, in this this discussion of jhana. I I, I I I'm still not entirely sure what it is. But you say I, we've heard discussion of the first jhana tonight and the fourth jhana but I, I i i'm wondering what what about the other two are they maybe could you possibly describe describe the the second and third if they or do people just skip from one to four and uh, the other the, the other question i had is about spiritual beings i i i'm interested to know um what 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 where they are, what they're doing, and 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 why do they need to be taught? But you teach some 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 arahants are teaching the spiritual beings. I'm just are they teaching the dhamma? I, I suppose they are, they are you without a body. That's all. When you when you're not having a body, you become a spiritual being. See, see, you do, you don't die with your body. The one who sing and talk right now doesn't die with the body. They are two separate entities. The mind and the body are two separate entities. The mind, when once they have no body, then the mind exists as a spiritual being. Okay. Until we come back. Uh, uh, reborn, when you're reborn. When you, when you have a chance to attach your, yourself to a new body, then you have rebirth. And, and can you just stay a spiritual being? <clears throat> if you don't want to be reborn? Yes, like the Buddha and his noble disciple. But you have to stop the cause of rebirth, which, which, which are your cravings. See? Craving for sensual pleasure, craving for being, and craving for not being. You have to stop all these cravings in order to stop rebirth. And you need jhana as part of the tool to stop your rebirth. So you need to practice mindfulness and meditate. If you want to know the details of the four jhana, just search in the Google for it. J H A N A. J H A N A. Yeah, four jhana. And, and so there are there is the second and and the third as well. We, we, yeah, we it's like driving an automobile. You 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 shift gear from first gear to second gear to third gear to fourth gear. And uh, the conditions of the the, the automobile will, will change. The speed and the the sound of the the automobile will, will will shift according to the gear you change. It's the same way with the mind. The mind becomes more calmer, more subtle. I cannot I can remember all the 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 details of this jhana, but you, if you want to, you know, you can search in Google for this. But okay. sometimes when you meditate, you usually go from first to fourth, like automatic transmission. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> that sounds good. But uh, and, and and how how quickly can one expect to 
to, to get in the first jhana? How do you know when you're there in the first jhana? You said when you're when you're just focused on your 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 meditation object. You're constantly That's mindful of that meditation object and not and not go to think about other things. You have to be solely watching your breath and not thinking about Jordan or about your your friend or whoever. You were I just see. constantly watching your breath, only knowing just the breath and not anything else. If you can do this for five minutes, you can enter into jhana. Okay. So you have to practice a lot of mindfulness before you meditate. See? Because usually when you when you sit and meditate, you can might you might be able to stay with your breath for a few seconds. And your mind will then start to go think about other things already. So practice the mindfulness during the day. That's right. From the time you get up to the time you go to sleep. Try to reduce the amount of thinking as much as possible by focusing on what you do. When you walk, just walk with your body. When you eat, just eat with your body. Don't let your mind go think about other things at the same time. This is mindfulness practice, using the body as the object of mindfulness. Then when you meditate, then you can, then you, then your mind can stick with the breath, the in and out breath. And if it doesn't think for five minutes, it can become still and enter into the fourth jhana. When you constant, if you're continuously watching your breath, you're, you're at the first jhana, see. <clears throat> but, it, uh, but it hasn't yet become fully still yet. It takes a little while for it to become fully still. Okay, so you can be in the first jhana for moments uh, initially, but, yes. but if, the if, goal if, is... But the goal is to get to the fourth jhana when the mind becomes completely still, not thinking, not not doing anything. Just merely knowing. And all the thoughts stop, disappear. And then it's, it seems that you are in in empty space, as if you are out, out in space by yourself alone. But not lonely, happy, content. The first jhana gives you contentment. All right. Maybe this will entice you to do more practice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm trying to keep a regular practice and uh, uh, it's uh, it, on my own without without Jordan's uh, prompting. And uh, I think of him every time I sit down and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh it's it's good i i'm 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 very very grateful to him for for pushing me in this direction so you have to bless push yourself now by setting up a, a regular a regular schedule for you to do like every day yep. at the same time you should stick to the schedule right okay if, if you don't have a schedule then your mind usually doesn't like to do what what is good for the mind. Mm. Right, that's very important. Schedule exactly the same time every every morning, every night. Mornings, yes, mornings are, are, are easier. The night, nights are get, you know, with all the, they get busy, uh, but. Uh, yes, all the thought that you spend during the day. So by, yeah. then, by nighttime, all this thoughts still linger in your mind. Yeah. I think maybe just before I go to bed, maybe the best time then, because you, everyone goes to bed, everyone gets up. Those are good times. You you have to be quiet. And, yes, sometimes uh, you can you get tired and you fall asleep. <laughs> that's true. But yeah. it's good time before you go to bed and after you get up in the morning. Start the day with meditation and end the day with meditation. I love I love and starting. It, with mm -hmm. the meditation and there's a little office in my office building there's a little room a quiet room and uh i'm thinking i might start going in there at, 
<coughs> at lunch and, and uh, yeah, try and meditate yeah. a bit there. Yeah, do as much as possible. You can find the time to do it. Thank you. I will. It's like a it's like a speed bump. It will stop your mind from running too too fast. You know, every time you meditate, you slow down your thoughts. It is really, like a speed bump. I really uh, enjoy it and and look forward to it now, which is uh, a change that I've noticed. I, I I really I don't I don't look for oh I have to go meditate now. Now I actually think oh my goodness I'm so lucky I have. I have a chance to sit and meditate. I feel good when I do that. So that's a good thing. Yes, that's right. You feel blessed to be able to meditate. And I've actually got to sit in the half lotus uh, briefly. Uh, so I'm, I'm moving along in that direction. I find that sitting in that position is, is really makes a difference. Yes, it's in, in it's, it's best position for meditation, really. It really is, makes a huge difference. So I'm gonna keep trying to get, get mm -hmm. that into a comfortable position for that because that supports your whole back and you can sit mm -hmm. tall and it's nice. Yeah, it takes time for your muscle to adjust to this new position, but after a while you, you'll, get, you, you'll find it easy as you go along. I hope so. All right. Okay. Thank you. Nice, Thank you. Nice talking Raj. to you. Nice okay. talking to you. Next, Ryan from Singapore. Good evening, Tom and John. Good evening to you. Got a question on uh, for my friend actually. Uh, it's a uh, is female, so she's actually considering. Uh, ordaining as a bhikkhuni. So just wondering, Ajahn, uh, sometimes in Thailand, it could be a challenging topic at times. So what, what are your thoughts on this matter? And also what would be your recommendations for my friend? I think the, the important thing is that whether you are ordained as a bhikkhuni or a machi, the important thing is the ability to, to, to practice. So sometimes in Thailand, mostly in Thailand, we don't have pikuni. But if you, but if you want to have close, stay close to good meditation teacher, Thailand has a lot of good meditation teacher. You have to ordain as a machi instead, which is not no different really, as far as practice is concerned. You still practice the noble eightfold path. But the, the discipline, the, 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 the code of monastic code is different. For Manchi, you just keep the 10 precepts. Mm -hmm. But for Bhikkhuni, you have to keep the 327 monastic codes or something. And as far as Thailand is concerned, we consider there's no longer Bhikkhuni lineage in, in the Theravada tradition. So you cannot just reinstate it by yourself. But I think they still have this lineage in the Mahayana tradition. If you want to ordain as a pikuni, you have to ordain in the Mahayana tradition, not the Theravada. But it doesn't. It makes much. It doesn't make much difference because you still have to practice the the mindfulness. You have to met. You still have to meditate. You still have to practice the austere practices. Eat once a day, eat in the bowl. This is more important thing to consider than whether you are pikuni or piku or mechi. So let's not get lost in the in the in the status of, of being. I want to be a pikuni because pikuni is much more maybe more respectable than being a mechi or something, something like that. The, 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 the goal is to look for a good place to meditate and a good teacher to, to guide you. That's more important than anything else. Thank you, Tanajan. Uh, any 
any recommendations for faces in particular or well you just go to to Ajahn or you know the disciples of Ajahn Cha or disciple of Ajahn Man tradition and they they are good meditate meditation teacher and they usually have quiet monastery for practice. So you just have to look around. So it's like shopping for a car. You have to go look in the showroom for different types of cars and test drive them. See, see which one you like best. And you buy that one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your answer, Tanajan. Appreciate it. Sadhu. You're welcome. Okay, see you later. Ajahn? Yes, good evening to you. I'm sorry. My connection keeps disconnected, but I'm back again. <laughs> That's fine. I can hear you well. Uh, well, nice to see you again. I was um, away for a little. I was doing a meditation retreat, so I came back a few days ago. Uh, Where, did I really don't have... Where did you go? Actually, I went to Thailand. Oh, it really? was a group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thailand and Sri Lanka. So it was a group I was invited and they had their own program. So it was mainly meditation, but we also visited some places like the site of Luang Pu Sao Cantasilo. That was really nice. The memorial of Ajahn Cha. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the stupa of Ajahn Mahabua, a very big stupa. Yes. And that was nice. Yes, I had never been, been there before. And yeah, I visited some teachers, Ajahn Gangha. Ajantan, I think is is called. So yeah, it was quite a, a busy program. And then we went to Sri Lanka, no? And I came back some days ago, still like trying to order myself. <laughs> so how was the trip like good, enjoyable, and inspiring? The visit to these teachers and to the sites of these teachers were extremely inspiring for me. And then maybe I have thought that I would have a little bit more solitude and a little bit more uh, time to meditate than I actually had, but it's just how how it was, no? So now, yes, I also want to think about these things in my practice looking forward, about how important it is for me to, to, to have solitude, no? Uh, and try to open those spaces also within my conditions to to be able to practice in that way. I don't know. I, I'm still trying to make some um, to order my thoughts about the experience of the meditation and how to move forward with my practice. No, getting the teachings of that. Usually, if you practice, you usually have to start with mindfulness. <laughs> Every teacher will teach the same thing. It's like when you learn to read and you start with the ABC. You know? So when you meditate, you start with mindfulness. But sometimes the conditions are so that it's difficult to have mindfulness in some conditions, but in other conditions. So you have I, to find the, the condition that will allow you to have it. That's why you have to yes. find the right condition. You have to yes. seek seclusion as much as possible. Yes, I think I, I went back a little bit in my mindfulness because obviously there is a big group, there are many things happening. So there also my mind is like thinking more than it thought, more than it should actually. So yeah, it was also a little bit like my problem <laughs> uh, to lose a little bit of mindfulness. No? So now I, I, I want to come back to 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 be more in the present moment. No? Try, as you always say, not to think so much but just remain in the present and not, don't judge so many things. Uh, don't be lost in the past. Don't be wondering or imagining too much about the future. No? So let's see how, how that goes. Yeah, you have to do this alone. If you're around people, they will try to get you to think or, or talk to you and you have to communicate with them. You, then you have to use your thoughts. Yeah. Yes, I'm starting to think that that's inevitable. That when you're around people, you have to talk like it. There's there's mm -hmm. no option, no. Yes. So yeah, mm -hmm. let's 
let's see how, how that goes. Yeah, so by now, I'm yeah, when you what when you if you want to succeed succeed in meditation, you, you you must not socialize. You must maintain seclusion as much as possible. Sometimes it's difficult, no? Sometimes you you don't have option. But for example, I always thought that the conditions here in in Peru were really bad because I had to do a lot of errands and I have to do lots of logistics and administration of the house and everything. But now I understand that it's not so bad, <laughs> that at least I can look for some seclusion within this, within the many things that I have to do, no? So, so yeah, yes. in that sense, it was not so bad, no? Try to yes. see the good things of the conditions yeah. that they have now. Seclusion doesn't mean you have to be in the forest, uh, in the mountain alone. You can be, have seclusion in, in your home, you in your room, by yourself. Yes. Yes, I've discovered that. I always complain that, oh, in the forest, it would be so nice. And actually, in the proper conditions in the forest, it would be so nice. Now I'm usually mm. drawn to that. But if it's not possible, well, yeah, the second best is just be alone in my room and try to have as much seclusion as possible to, to be able to strengthen my, my mind. So, yeah. Mm. Yes, try to have seclusion and try to stay mindful and meditate and as much as possible. This is your first step. Yeah. Before you can go I, to vipassana or wisdom. Yes, yes. I think I'm still like on the basics still, no? I always think that it's advancing, but then it goes back and then I advance a little bit and then I go back. So <laughs> Yeah, you must you, you must be able to abandon your your sensual pleasure, craving for sensual pleasure. If you want to yeah. move ahead in your meditation, if you still go to your sensual pleasure, then you're you're sort of backtracking. You're going back the other yes, direction. Yes, 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 yes. Totally right. I'm sorry, I'm totally right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a little bit going out to the world also exposes you to lots of of, of sensual pleasures, no? And it's difficult not to yes. get caught in in, mm -hmm. in them. Yeah. Many thanks for your guidance, Brian. <laughs> well, you know, sensual pleasures, uh, defilement can come in very different disguise. Like pilgrimage trip can also be a, a disguise for <laughs> sensual pleasure <laughs> without knowing it. Yes, exactly. I would have never imagined, but yes, <laughs> there's so many opportunities for sensual pleasures to be there waiting for you <laughs> and tempting mm -hmm. you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You have to lock yourself up in your in your room. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a double sword because yes, I get solitude here in my room. But once I go out, it's like again, no. I mean, you're exposed again. So yeah. You have to be mindful, very especially more mindful when you go go outside. The Buddha said you have to watch your 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 senses. Don't 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 let it go go wild. You know, try to tame it. <laughs> Yes, little by little, little by little. Like <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else? Okay. No, nothing else. No, no other question by now. Many thanks, Dragon. Okay, you're welcome. I'll go to Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. I win. <laughs> uh, I have got uh, one question regarding the uh, what you talk about Pajara Samadhi. Uh, sometimes I hear people talking about fifth to the eighth jhana. Is it is it the same as Pajara Samadhi? Uh, the Arupa jhana. No, Arupa jhana are just much more subtle jhana than the, the Ru Rupa jhana. Oh, okay. They're still in the in the jhana. They're not the Upajana Samadhi. Upajana Samadhi is active samadhi. Well, jhana are uh, inactive samadhi. In, in jhana, you, you still don't mind to become inactive. Why well, in upachara samadhi, you, you, you become very active, but active in the, in the psychic world, in the psychic ability. So the fifth to the eighth jhana is not important, right? No, it's a, a rupa jhana level. Right. Therefore, for a rupa, rupa jhana and for a rupa jhana level, 
it just means the mind become more still, more 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 refined, more subtle. Right, right. So, so if if you happen to go into the the arupa jhana, you can also have this stability, and when you come out, you can also uh, uh, investigate. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Anything from from the fourth jhana onward will give you equanimity. Thanks, Nigel. Very clear. Thanks. Okay. Good. We'll go to Brazil now. Alfredo. How are you, Alfredo? Happy? Hi, Bhante. Hi, how are you? Happy with Dharma. <laughs> I'm happy with the word. <laughs> it's the same, but it's the same. It's a kidney. <laughs> <laughs> You're not happy. But, uh, but today, today you are in the spirit of being burnt. <laughs> yeah, your voice is is yes, is, yes. Yes, I'm, is, I'm, lost, I'm, is lost. Yeah. <laughs> we are spiritual beings, but we use the body to communicate with each other. The body, Thanks, is, like, yeah, the body is like a cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> we, use, we, we use the body to communicate with each other. Once there is no yes. body, then we cannot communicate. We, then we have to communicate with somebody who has the, the, the special the special samadhi, special meditation. Yes. Samadhi. yes. I, uh, last years, you, you say that uh, if, we, if we can help uh, with uh, Eddie, advice about uh, about the dharma is is permit uh, oh, if you know the dharma and, and if somebody asks you for help you, you can give them the dharma if you know but if yes. you don't but but if you still as you still a student and you still haven't yet graduated maybe you should not spend too much time teaching other people yet wait yes. until you graduate before you you become a teacher yourself Yes. Full time. But yes. you can be a part time teacher. If someone asks you how to meditate and if you know how to do it, you can teach them how to do it. Yes. Yes. Uh, my... you... Go ahead. My, 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 my perception, Bante, is my, my practice is, is pay attention. Pay attention, uh, Anicca Dukkha Nata, Anicca Dukkha Nata, 24 hours a day. Anatta is very, very important to, to not have uh, delusions, né? to not have problems. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, 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 I think the, the, the students have to, to main uh, uh, jhana and and uh, first, first jhana is possible. Second jhana, but is happy in body. Happy in body is if you don't have happy in body, very very happy in your in your leg. On your, if you you don't have for jhana, but upon a samadhi is is only possible. You have all all body in energy, energy, very energy, energy, energy. Né? Uh, it's a pity. Pity is is pity. Pity in body is second jhana. Is 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 not have this. Not have a panasamadhi, but uh, I think uh, I think uh, um, uh, I think uh, uh, the energy is very important. Né? Uh, you you are a uh, people that very energy in dharma, né? and I give to to teachings the the Buddha to to restate the Dharma, restate the the Buddha, restate the Dharma, restate the the Sangha. It's very important to, to have energy, né? To have energy, to have uh, a, a, a life in Dharma, né? I think it is this the this uh, this is meta, but meta meta if Dharma Dharma for all peoples uh, energy of Good energy, né? Is this the possible entering jhana with meta, né? 
meta, 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 and meta with energy, energy, and energy. And we have PT in body, you have Corjana. But the, the important is, is, is Vipassana, the, the, you say this, but the Vipassana is necessary, a very, very meditation, eh, but the, because uh, meditation is a, is a house to, to Dhamma, eh, but the, yes. Yes, you need meditation before you can go to Vipassana. You need yes. Samadhi first. Yes. So practice, practice mindfulness and Samadhi first. Then you go to Anicca, Dukkha, Manatha for yes. wisdom. Okay. Yes. Many, many, many teachers say about the two qualities of a person. Qualities of, of a good person, qualities of, of uh, dana, quality of uh, uh, upeka, quality of uh, samadhi, quality of sila, uh, is important, né, Bante? But uh, meditation is important too, né? The, a middle way, né, Bante? Yes, you uh, need both, everything. You both need both, sila, you both need are important. Né? You need yes. everything. Like an automobile, you need the wheels, you need the engines, you need the steering wheel, you need the brakes. Yes. So the, yes. the noble head four part had, had eight factors that you have yes. to have. Yes. Okay. Okay. I, I, I say this because many teachers teach us that with important these qualities, qualities to a good person, qualities to a dana, qualities to samadhi, qualities to peka, qualities, 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 and meditation, but is not important. If only important is vipassana, Meditation is not important, né, but it's the impression that I that I I have. Okay. Okay. Whatever. All right. Thank you. But okay. But uh, but but uh, thanks for your teachings. I I like for teachings. I like your sangha. I like your community. I okay. I I like your 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 the the, the able that you have. To pass dharma to to us is I I like is very important. Okay, good. Keep following us then. Okay. Okay. Hi. Next, Hi. Clara. Clara, where are you from? This is your first time here. Can you microphone? Good evening, Tanajan. Yeah, I'm from Singapore. Okay. Can I help you? Sorry, Tanajan, I, I couldn't hear that. What, what, what can I help you? Okay. Um, so I have a question that I'm asking on behalf of some friends. So um, for people who are aiming to keep the eight precepts long term, um, do you have any advice on how we can keep our third precept as purely as we can? Because I think that even if we choose not to engage in relationships, I think when we live in an internet age where things like pornography is very accessible and it's very normalized, then I think people still very easily succumb to self-gratification. And I noticed that lust can be very easily triggered um, in the surroundings of lay life as well, especially in the case for men. And I think that Asuba meditation, um, it often feels like a very dry and intellectual exercise when we don't have that um, concentration in our meditation. So I was wondering, Tanajan, do you have any practical advice for how we can reduce and eventually overcome lust completely? So for example, can breaking a stream of um, lustful thoughts with entertainment like music or a show, can this actually be recommended in their life? Thank you, Tanajan. Well, there are so many, several factors that you have to have in order to be able to tame or to get rid of your sensual desire. Yeah. Keeping the, 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 the precept, the A precept is one way. Second is to seek seclusion, to be far away from the, the distraction or, of the sensual objects. Like go and live in a monastery, for instance, and then maintain mindfulness all day long from the time you get up to the time you go to sleep then this will be enable you to be able to more or less uh, keep the sensual desire in check. Maybe not get rid of it yet, 
you know, to get rid of it, you have to see the asupa of you know, or anicca of all the sensual objects, which might take time because you might have to do mindfulness and meditation first before you can then teach your mind to constantly contemplate on the supra or on the nidja. So this is what you have to do. Okay. I cannot hear you because you do you want to speak or just okay. thank you, Dana Yeah, um, nothing further. Thank okay, you so much for your listening. All right. I'll go to Malaysia again. Philip Kuala Lumpur. Uh, good evening. I don't have any questions tonight. <laughs> it's just uh, happy to be listening in. And who is this guy next to you? Uh, oh, that's my younger son. He, he's, he's always listening to you before he goes to sleep. <laughs> so, Hello. Uh, Hello. Like, Hello. Okay. You understand what we're talking about? I do. These are my dogs. Hmm? Sometimes. Sometimes? Sometimes I don't understand. Okay. Just keep listening. You're, the more you listen, the more you you understand, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Bye-bye, Ajahn. Good night. Have a good sleep. Okay. Thank you, Ajahn. Thank you, Ajahn. Thank you, Ajahn. Good night. I go to Dubai now. Aparachita. Namasakan, Ajahn. I guess I just picked up my first time, friends. So... Is that right? Namasakan Praja? Namas yes, Namasakan. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, yes, um, I am just uh, working on uh, stabilizing, just uh, practicing regularly. And uh, that's it. And uh, grateful to always attend this meeting. So no questions. Yeah, you have to set up the schedule for practice and stick with yes. the schedule. Yes, I every morning. And if you find it you you're useful and you want to practice more, then you set you set more set up more schedule as as you as you advance. Yes, that's the intention. Yeah. Schedule is the intention. Uh, in in the perfection is called atita. <clears throat> That's true. You have to set up your intention first. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, nothing, no question tonight. No question. Thank you. Okay. All right, we'll go to Wales now, to Diana. Hello, Diana. Greetings, Tanajan. Um, I have... Uh... Um, I wanted to ask you about the teaching on um, marriage and divorce and, um, yes, that. <laughs> well, if you're married, you should have to be, you have to have fidelity. You cannot commit any extracurricular activity. You have to be faithful to your partner. This is keeping the five precepts. This is all. But there's no no rule that says you cannot get a divorce. If you find that you could no longer live together, then you can separate amicably, and friendly, still remain friend, and but separate. You, we we should always maintain loving kindness toward mm -hmm. everybody, regardless mm -hmm. of whether we have a relationship with them or not. <clears throat> so if people are having difficulties, they can't resolve then it's okay for them to finish but That's as long right. as they do it with compassion oh, yes with compassion with loving kindness with understanding that maybe we are not made for each other <laughs> yes sometimes people seem to be made for each other and they're not <laughs> mm. yes but when, when you're still when you're still partners you have to be faithful to each other 
my daughter's cat, sorry. <laughs> mm. Um, yes, thank you. Oh, unless you get permission from your partner to allow you to have another relationship, then that's okay also. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds exhausting. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, that is that all? Mm-hmm. All right. Go to Sri and check from Vancouver or nearby. You finish you finish you finish with your memorize memorizing yet? <laughs> Not yet. Night night channel ground contemplations. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's helpful. Helpful, huh? Good. Helpful. <laughs> do, it least every day. do it every day before you go to bed. Before you meditate, recite what you memorize. And it will help you calm your mind down and you can then meditate better after after you finish reciting the the sutta. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Even like sometimes if I like, you know, extend my hand or anything, hey, I remember like the sutta was saying this. So then at that moment, like at least like, you know, I, I'm mindful of that moment. It's kind of like reminding myself internally. That's right. You need something, you need reminder. If you don't have something to remind you, then you keep forgetting, right? <clears throat> yes. Yes. If it's Buddha, Buddha, sometimes I keep for, forgetting, but this with a message. Mm -hmm. Um. So okay, at least like, that's what Buddha taught us. So good. Keep on so doing we, it. You you find that this that you you will be advancing with steadily advancing. Your mind become more mindful and easier to control as you as you practice. Yeah. But you you have to keep it up. Though. Don't do it now and then a few days later we forget and then. <laughs> You can forget it easily, you know that. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't, if you, if you if you don't set up a certain a certain rule that I must not forget this, I must do this every day or something like this. Yeah. Can you can you set up this rule? I'm gonna recite this thing every day, for instance. Yes. Then you will never forget. But if you don't set up this rule. After a few days, you might get someday you get busy, you forget, and then a few a few more busy days, then you, you then then you stop deciding altogether. <laughs> yes, that's make it a point to do it every day. Okay, it's yeah. very good. The that the teaching of the Buddha, keep it close to your heart. Yeah, that's how we keep the teaching close to our hearts. Okay. We we'll keep reciting, reciting, memorizing the teaching. Yeah, yeah, it's helpful. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ajahn Budan say, like, you know, uh, we ask us to abide independent, meaning it's like to do it ourselves now, like. In, independent in which way? Yeah, you say, like, it, you know, you abide independent. Mm -hmm. And then it means not, you don't rely on anything except you rely on yourself, Atahi, Atano, Nato. We can, we can exist without having to depend on other, other things or people. We can rely on ourselves if we have mindfulness. We can have happiness within ourselves. We don't need happiness from other people. Mm -hmm. Because if you have mindfulness, you can practice, you can meditate, you can enter jhana, then you can have happiness within yourself. Then you can become a monk like me. <laughs> right now you cannot, you still have to have happiness from your wife, you know, from your money, from all the things that you have to keep you happy. But I don't have to have anything because I have meditation. That's the way of keeping me happy. Mm. Yeah, that's what you mean, like not clinging to anything in the world. Because they are useless. They are more harmful than useful. Because they are not reliable. Your wife one day might leave you, right? Then what happened if she leaves you? Go back to practice. 
<laughs> you shed <laughs> tears. You cry first, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and probably look for a new wife. <laughs> no, no, no practice. <laughs> because you don't know how to practice it, but you know how to get a new wife. <laughs> <laughs> they go back to square one. <laughs> yeah. People keep forgetting. They they forget history, you know, what happened in the past. <laughs> Then they'll repeat the same mistake again and again, over and over again. <laughs> same mistake. Yeah. Okay, anything else would you like to say? <laughs> For me so far, it's good. The practice mm. is good. Like, at least I got a goal. Um, yeah, it's, it's helpful. Yeah. You have to set up a goal. Or else mm -hmm. you will not you you will not get where you want to go. See, you have to have determination, resolution. So I'm just go. I'm gonna keep reciting this this sutta every day. Then nothing can stop you mm -hmm. because you don't need anything to recite. It's in your mind. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, at least it's reminding myself, so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Tanja. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Intan from Indonesia. Good evening, Ajahn. Yes, good evening to you. Uh, next Friday, I'm going to work again. Again, huh? okay. Uh, I think one, one guy is becoming popular with, with lots of uh, West uh, foreigners now coming to one guy. Indonesian, <laughs> Singaporean, Malaysian, <laughs> Chinese, mm -hmm. and some Westerners also. Mm. Maybe because of this meeting, people get to learn no know more about what yeah and, and uh, what they can yes. do. Mm. Yes. Okay, how long you expect to stay? Uh two weeks. Two weeks, huh? Oh, really? uh -uh. Good. You find useful oh. for you last time when you came? Uh-huh. What good? I beg your pardon. Did you have find it useful last time when you came? To stay. Yes. Uh, uh Yes. Uh, for this time, I I want to push myself. Uh, I I want to uh try to fasting. Good. Good. In, if you fast, you should not come out and meet people or see things because it can make you hungry. If you come to the dining hall, you should avoid the dining hall. If you fast, stay in your, stay in your dorm, stay in your room. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Because but I can uh, uh go up can for go. Uh, for meditation uh, yes. or for walking meditation. Yes, you can go meditation, chanting, but don't come to the dining hall because oh, okay. when you see food, you might not be able to resist your cravings. <laughs> okay, I judge. All right, I'll see you then next uh -huh. Friday. Huh? Okay, thank you, Prajan. Okay. I'll go to cook saying, oh, no, I'm sorry. Ka fai lim, ka fai lim. Okay, you, Tanajan, I have no question for now. Okay. Go to Piao and Indira from Toronto. <clears throat> Good morning Good from Toronto, Tanajan. Good evening to you. How are you? Very good, thank you. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'm okay. I don't have. He's the one who has all the questions. No, no, I don't have a question. I just was thinking, like, how much of practice? Uh, I mean, we do can be, for a example, if you're fortunate enough to become a, uh, maybe unfortunate enough to be another human next birth. How much do it carry on factor? Like, uh, 
the samatha or vipassana or both? Is there a, like a, the more the, the vipassana part you carry on to another uh, birth, like your memory, like or is the samatha practice also is transformed to another destination? They are transformed more or less depend on how much you have developed. Hmm. The more you have the the more you develop, the more you will carry over with you. Hmm. See what what you did with your what you what what you do with practice, it it, it goes with you. But what okay. you do with memory, sometimes you lose it. You, yeah. Because when you you can memory can be anicca, say impermanent, sanya hmm. anicca. Hmm. But with something that you do then it's not memory. It's something you you build in your mind. And it goes with you. Mm. Like if you know how to meditate, when you go next life, you will know how to meditate. Yeah, you see some like uh, kids like uh, have a uh, previous memory. They just right away get into meditation. You see this. Uh, maybe it's coming from their previous practices. Yeah, like I the guess. Buddha when he was a kid, he he could enter the jhana alone when he was left alone. Yeah. Mm. Sitting under the tree, yeah. That's because yeah, he did, he used to do it before. Yeah. And when the condition is right for him to go into jhana, he'll go automatically into jhana. And I think jhana is something people have sometimes with past life. Yeah, even ancient rishis, and they have like, I mean, most people have perfected the jhanas, I guess, uh, before the time of Buddha, but the vipassana part is something which is unique. You, you, vipassana is something that you have, need to study from the Buddha. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. So sometimes it doesn't go with you. It will yeah. go you if you are sotapanna, then you have, so, mm. you have vipassana with you. Then mm. you can practice on your own until you reach Nibbana. Mm. That's that's when you become attahyatanonato. Like you become to until uh, then, you need some support from another person. You can be your own teacher once you have reached the sotavana level. You understand the four noble truths and the three characteristics of existence. So you can use this to eliminate the remaining fetters that you haven't yet eliminated in your next life. If you should die before before you became fully enlightened. Mm -hmm. Because accident could happen, you know, the body could die for some other reason. It, it doesn't respect whether you are a sotapanna or not. Even the Buddha has to die. You know, the body. Mm. But the mind doesn't die with the body. And the mind, if it achieves something, it will take that achievement with it into the next life. That's, that's the chitta, the part remains. That's right. The spiritual being, we call spiritual being, chitta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, another uh, question is the, different to this. Uh, the, when they talk about uh, the mundane right view and uh, super mundane right view, um, I think they uh, in the sutra they talk about it. So the mundane is just for a person to believe in uh, the karmic uh, consequences of your actions, basically. The super mundane is to know the four noble truth. There is suffering and there is a way out of suffering and we have to work through the path. Is it something like that? Super mundane means the, the, the level of the noble, the, the maka pala, mm -hmm. so the pala upward is called super mundane. Samadhi, jhana, and keeping the sila is dana is mundane. Mm. It, it doesn't re release you from the, the, the world of the realms of rebirth. Mm. With super mundane, it will deliver you outside of the realms of rebirth. Like a sotapanna will have more, not more than seven lives left. Mm. The Sakida Kami, only one, one life left as a human being. And uh, Anand Kami only exists in the Brahma world before it finished and become fully enlightened and exit the, the mundane world 
completely, totally. Yeah. The mundane world is samsara, so the three worlds of mm. existence. Mm. The sensual realm of existence, the rupa realm of existence, the yeah, rupa that realm of existence. Okay. If you want to get, get out of this three realms of existence, you need to practice the teaching of the, 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 the wisdom of the Buddha, discovered by the Buddha, mm -hmm. the Four Noble Truths and the Three Characteristics of Existence. Then you enter into the supramundane level. Mm -hmm. When you become, when you become, when you get rid of the fetters, you become Sodapana, Sankhidagami, Anagami, and then Arahant. I mean, it's very clearly defined, uh, the enlightenment, uh, the, the teachings of the Buddha, the, the, the fetters, you know, I mean, no other uh, philosophy talking about enlightenment, they don't really categorize so, so clearly, these That's are right. the fetters, three, mm -hmm. three fetters, I mean, people talk about enlightenment, mm -hmm. but never so defined, very clear cut as uh, teachings of the Buddha, what enlightenment is. That's, that's to show you what the Buddha really knows and nobody else mm. knows. Mm. If, you, if you go study in other teaching, you'll never find the ten fetters, the, mm. the four no. noble truths, mm. the three characteristics of existence. It's, it's unique with the Buddha. Only. Amazing. Uh, the, so Sotapanna still have the anger uh, and lust still remaining. Still have lust for the body, yes. Se sexual desire. It's only the third level when you cut, when you, when you eventually got rid of all the sexual desire. So that's why uh, uh, an anakami doesn't return as a human anymore because it doesn't have any de desire to have sex with anybody. <clears throat> but it's still stuck with the the rupa. Uh, Ruparada, Ruparada. Rupa it's, it's still attached to the Rupachana and the Rupachana. Mm -hmm. So he has, to, he has to realize this and then get rid of his attachment to this Rupachana and Rupachana. Now, they also have the mana still with them, like with yeah, a, it's with a conceit, vehicle. Conceit is conceit. still within the mind. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. also a richa. Mm -hmm. still, yeah, not the last... the, still not seeing the Four Noble Truths. Yeah. Completely. Yeah, it's there's still some yeah, aspect of the four noble truth that that he hasn't mm. seen yet. Mm. Yeah, I re recently read a sutra. It uh, very clearly says that to destroy the last five fetters, that's a higher fetters, you need the jhanas. There's no question. This very clearly said. No, no you need you, you need ten of, to get rid of the ten. You need all you you need mm. you need you need jhana. Without jhana, you won't be able to enter into the Supramandan level. Is it even for the lower fetters? I have not seen that. Uh, is in the lower fetters you need the jhanas? Who? Oh, for the, the lower? Yes. Lower. Yes, yeah. you all need them. Okay. Unless you might not have to develop in this life because maybe in your past life you already have it. See, okay. it's an exception. See, people mm. don't understand that some people already have jhana in their past life. They don't mm. have. They don't have to practice jhana in this life. Once they study the fetter, they can get they can I get see. rid of them right away. Those are rare, probably in between the, the, the exception to the rule, all this is. Yeah. Right when the Buddha first gave the first sermon, they gave to the five ascetics. Ah, yes. That's and they all have jhanas already. Mm. So he didn't teach them to practice jhana. He's teaching the the no the, the, the four noble truths, uh, yeah. the four noble truths and the right. noble eight four pan. Yeah. Even by here, Daruchira, the Bark yeah. cloth, the, he had it probably already. Yeah, this so already just have them, just tell them the, the wisdom part. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I think what's next? Sulan from Singapore. Always last but not least. Yeah. Hello, Ajahn. Nice to see you. Yeah. How are you? Good? Huh? Happy? Yeah, I'm very happy. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I I received the teaching. Yeah, uh, through Ryan. Yeah. Have you started practicing yet? Have you started practicing yet? Yeah, I started. 
like last Tuesday, you asked me like, uh, what is so hard about meditating every day? Uh, then I started meditating. Yeah. Every day now? Good. Yeah. How long? Five minutes? Ten minutes? Yeah, five, ten minutes. Five, ten minutes, okay. Yeah. And keep add up, keep, keep pushing more, okay? From five to ten, from ten to fifteen. Yes. You want to go as far as one hour if possible, okay? That's the goal. Oh. Can you do that? Yeah, I will try to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. If you find that it's hard for you to concentrate on your breath or on Bhutto, then you can do some chanting instead. Mm. You, you just meditate with the, using the chant instead of using Bhutto or using the breath. If you find it difficult to focus on the breath, then use the chanting. You do it mentally while you meditate. Mm. I'll do it uh, mentally while I meditate when I focus on the chant. Mm -hmm. mm. You know the chant, right? Antipiso, Pakawa. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I know. So just use the Antipiso, Pakawa. Mm. Mm. Or whatever chant you like, you, you can remember. You can use any chant, doesn't matter which one. If you cannot, if you, if you find it hard to focus on your breath, on your breathing, or, or on the mantra, because your your mind might be a bit restless or agitated, then mm. you might need to use your chanting first. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or after you meditate for a while, then your mind start become restless again, and you cannot focus on on your breath and use chanting again if you want to continue meditating mm. until you, until you reach your 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 goal mm. whatever the time you set up to to meditate mm. okay yes you have any question tonight oh yes yes i have question um for the brahma vihara suttas um uh, when I was reading the sutta, I was saying to complete the awareness with um, the Brahma Vihara in the first direction, second direction, third, fourth, and then uh, top, bottom, and all around. So um, there seems to be six directions uh, to like uh, practicing the Brahma Vihara. Does the six direction correspond to um like the Sikalo Vada uh, Sutta, the sixth direction referring to like our parents, our teachers, our spouse. Um, yeah, is, is that what it's referring to? It means that you have to have you have to apply the Brahma Vihara with everybody. Mm. That's so all in summary, you know, whether they are higher than you or they are lower than you or they are equal to you. Oh, okay. You give you give loving kindness to everybody mm. equally the same. Or even the animals or mm. the devas. Oh, okay. So it's not necessarily like really like literally in front of me, behind me. It is like um, just a metaphorical that is That's right. everyone. Whoever you meet, whoever you see, whether they come from up or up above you or below you, treat them nice, treat, treat, give them love, kindness, and compassion. Mm. <clears throat> That's what it means. Mm, treat them nice. Sabbe sata, all being. Mm. All being. Okay. Whether physical beings or spiritual beings, mm. whether human or animal, you have to have metta, karuna, mudita toward them. Mm. Oh, then when it's hard to have metta or karuna, then we just uh, try not to. Then, then you, just, you just have equanimity, ubeka. Ubeka. Mm. Yeah, it's hard to have to figure out. 
will be guys just to protect yourself from becoming uh, unhappy because you cannot help other people. When you want to help other people and you cannot help them or they don't want your help, then you might feel bad. But if you have a big class, then you won't feel bad. Say, okay, I try my best. If I cannot do that, that's too bad. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, if I cannot help, then it's too bad. Yeah. True. Okay. And then, um, how, how would you um, explain jhana to people who have not like, experienced jhana before? Oh, uh, it's like going to a deep sleep. No dreams, no nothing. Just sound, sound sleep. Or just being sound asleep. That's yeah. how it's like. And when you wake up, you feel refreshed and strengthened, right? Oh. If you if you have dreams, you you might feel restless when you when you awake. You might feel feel tired if you have bad dreams. But if you have no dreams, when you wake up, you feel refreshed and strong. Mm. Mm. Mm, okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. I think I'll go to Punjuk now for a question from email. Namaskar. We have six questions from the assistant Gmail and two questions from Facebook so far. The first set of questions from assistant Gmail, the first one is from Sam from Brisbane. Question one, the mind is permanent. Is spiritual happiness from a calm mind also permanent after that person becomes an arahant? Well, when you become an arahant, you might become calm all the time, see, because the Anaran has got rid of all the 10 fetters, which, which are the cause of, of agitation and restlessness in the mind. Once there are no fetters left in the mind, then the mind becomes perfectly calm all the time, forever. Nibbanam balamang sukham, that's what it means. Balamang sukham, permanent happiness, supreme happiness, absolute happiness. Question two, are the calm mind when one stops thinking and the calm mind of an arahant who merely knows, are they the same? Yes, they are the same calm mind. The difference is that the calm mind of uh, when you stop thinking is temporarily, when the calm mind of an arahant is permanent because the, the calm mind, the mind of the arahant has no fetters or no defilement to cause any any restlessness or agitation. But the calm, the, the calm mind from using mindfulness to stop thinking, it will only be calm temporarily. As soon as you remove the mindfulness, then when you start thinking, then the mind can become restless and agitated again. Question three, does the mind of an arahant still have the spiritual happiness from calm mind? Or is the mind of an arahant merely knowing and empty of all emotions? They are both, they have happiness and also empty of all emotion. Question four, is there still happiness in fourth jhana or does fourth jhana only have ubeka? There is happiness, the happiness, the, the highest form of happiness is the, the happiness from, from the mind being still, which is the fourth jhana. Usually we call this contentment, this type of happiness is contentment. When you have a big car, you no longer you no longer need anything. You don't want anything. So you don't react anything to anything. You don't react with love, hate, fear, or delusion. Question five. How to get rid of conceit in the mind of an anagami? The, uh, you have to understand that the the conceit comes from delusion, misunderstanding. Of, like people in ancient times, they believe the, the, the earth is flat, you know, when, when actually the, the, the earth is not flat. So it's the same way with conceit. Conceit comes from thinking. See? When you stop thinking, the conceit disappears. Yeah. So you know that conceit is just the product of your thinking. 
nothing else. So you have to teach your mind not to think in a conceited way, that's all. Just teach your mind there is no self. Everybody is the same. We are, the, we are composed of two parts, physical and spiritual parts. And we are all the same. Every aspect of our physical and spiritual part are the same. So no one is better or worse than anybody else. The next question is from Samanji. What is heart and what is mind? We know that it is our mind that does not die even if the body dies, but the heart just mm -hmm. dies with the body. Am I correct? No, no. It's not the heart that is in the body. The heart that pumps the blood. This is not the heart we're talking about. The heart and mind is the same thing. Sometimes we refer to it separately. If we, talk, we think about intellectual part of the mind, we call mind or chitta. If we if we if we're talking about the emotional part of the of the mind, we call the heart or the mano in, in Pali. So it's the same thing. It has two aspects. It has this intellect intellectual part and it has the emotional part. And a continuing question from Samanji is I have heard people say, I think from the heart, not the mind. Why do they say so? Because they think with emotion, they think with love, with, with compassion. With thinking on the mind, you, you think out of reason, rationality. The next two questions are from Facebook. The first question is from Divyal Goel. What can I say to a family member who has a serious illness and is not able to still their mind? Say nothing if they don't ask you to say anything. <laughs> And the continuing question is, how can I still my mind when seeing their suffering? Meditate, use mindfulness, bring the mind to jhana, with equanimity. And the okay. last question, the last oh. question is from Liana Lim. Good evening, Tanajan. When I had anger, I sit and do mindfulness of breathing in and breathing out, but the mind never stays still. I tried reminding the mind the anger causes dukkha, it is anicca, so I should let go of the anger. This method is also not helpful. This anger stayed for quite some time, a week or so. Eventually, it went away, as time always changing in permanence, but it was very tiring. What meditation method should I do when there is anger in the mind? I think... Using the mantra Bhutto is, is much more effective. When you feel angry, just keep reciting Bhutto, Bhutto. Don't stop until you well, don't don't stop until your, your anger disappears. If you still have anger, keep reciting Bhutto, Bhutto, Bhutto. Another way of getting rid of your anger is to go to the cause of your your anger and the, what makes you angry is your mm -hmm. desire. You want some you want people to do a certain thing a certain way. When they don't do what you want them to do, then you get angry. So you have to let go of your desire and leave people alone. Let them do whatever they want to do. Don't expect anything from anybody. When you don't expect anything, then you won't be disappointed. Then you won't you, then you won't get mad. See? We get mad because we expect something like you, you, like you expect me to say a nice thing to you. When I don't say a nice thing to you, you get angry at me. But if you don't expect me to say a nice thing to you, you expect me to, you, you, you can take anything I say, then you don't get angry. So try to not um, to expect anything from anybody. Just, let, just take things as they come, then you will never get angry. Another question just came in from Marilyn Lee. How does one know he or she is ready for vipassana meditation? Do we need guidance to practice vipassana? Can you contemplate on death or asupa? If you can, then you're ready. If you're not ready, if you, you cannot contemplate on death or asupa, then, then it, it means you're not ready yet. That is all, Ka. Okay. We have more questions from our... Our member here, which is Koksang. Go ahead, Koksang. Yeah, uh, thank you, Prajan. Uh, this question arises me, in me when I was uh, hearing the uh, conversation just now. 
So uh, Prabhupada John, uh, I recall that uh, Buddha mentioned about the importance of having physical seclusion in our practice, but at the same time, the Buddha also mentioned about the importance of having uh, Kaliya Mitas. So how, uh, how do we uh, reconcile the, uh, on one hand, the importance uh, to being secluded uh, from uh, other people, and at the same time, the importance of having uh, spiritual friends in our practice? Well, see, Kalayan Mita actually means having a good teacher to teach you and guide you. So when you're first starting, you have to study with a teacher first. And once you know that what you have to do, then you ask, ask permission. Or he'll, he'll usually provide you with seclusion for you. He'll tell you where to go, where to stay, and be alone. So it's two, two steps. First, you need a good teacher to, to teach you, to guide you. And once you start practice, your teacher will say, okay, you stay alone, don't, 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 get, don't socialize with anybody. Okay. So, okay. So that means I have the wrong assumption that uh, Kali Yamita actually refers to spiritual friends. Is... No, no, just, just teacher. When you, yeah. when you practice, when you study and meditate, you don't want to socialize with anybody. Even if you live in the same monastery, you stick to your, 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 your place. You don't go around and socializing with other people, other members of the community. Everybody stays in them, stick to themselves and do their own practice. Only come together when they have to work Community, community, community work like eating or cleaning, mm. and then if we finish, we have to separate and go back to our, our own quarter. Okay, yeah, understand. Yeah. All right. Anybody else would like to have any question? We have a few more minutes left. Raise your hand and unmute your microphone. Do we have any newcomer who just came in or not? Okay. Yes, we have one. Samanji. Samanji? Yes, yes. She's in the line. Okay. Is she in the room yet? Yeah, yeah. She's Samanji? I don't see her on my screen. Okay. 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 See you now. Samanji, how are you? I knew your microphone first. Can you hear me yet? Okay, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, perfectly. I just have one question, Anajan. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, and now there are arhans, like there are people, like uh, certain people say that uh, they, have, they have attained so on status. Like, how do we know that actually whether one has uh, become a so on or not? You can know by following the teaching. And if you can achieve the same thing that he has teach you, then you can be sure that he, he, he actually became enlightened. But if he cannot yet prove it to yourself, then just be a little bit skeptical. Be not, not skeptical, but don't believe, totally believe, or don't, no, or don't totally disbelieve. Just just take the word for, put it on hold and wait for, for confirmation first of your practice. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Does, it, does it answer your question? Because, yeah, Tanaja. Because yes. you don't know whether he's speaking the truth or not. Yeah. And mm -hmm. also, if a, if a person, yeah. In, in the Kalama Sutta, the Buddha say, don't believe what I say until you can prove it is, whether it's true or not first. And the only way to prove somebody who's an enlightened is you, you have to study with them and then we'll become enlightened from the teaching. Then you can see, you can then pretty much say, yeah, he must be enlightened, or else I will not be enlightened from his teaching. Like when you became enlightened as a sotapanna, 
you will have no doubt in the Buddha because you know this is the teaching of the Buddha that you you used to be to be, to become enlightened yourself. So you have no doubt in the Buddha, in the Dharma practice, in the Dharma teaching, or in the noble disciple because you yourself became a noble disciple. Thank you. Anything else? And also, if uh, like uh, we love so on, a person who has achieved a higher mental status such as so on, Sakudagami or Arad, will such a person ever say that he have he has achieved such a higher mental status? Even if we ask him, such a person ever say that he has achieved such a you have to you have to shut off your microphone and your speaker first. It, 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 um, Okay. You usually an enlightened person doesn't like to brag about himself. But he'll he'll talk about the the how to achieve enlightenment. This is his teaching, see. But he usually will not say I'm a Sotapana or I'm a Sakidakami or I'm an Arahan. But he say keep doing this and you'll become this and this. You'll, He'll, he'll tell you how to become enlightened. But usually he will not tell people that he's enlightened. And is it proper to ask that question from such a person? Like if a lay person? Well, you can ask, but you might not get an answer that you like to 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 to, to hear, you know. You might get you might get some other answer, like go keep practicing, you'll find out yourself. Okay. <laughs> because this, this, there is a rule that prohibits monks to, to say something about his, his achievement if he hasn't done, he, if he hasn't actually achieved. This is one of the four cardinal sins of a monk to tell that he's enlightened when he's not enlightened. See? He could be. It could be sued and be disrobed. So it's better to stay clear from this, this subject of enlightened, whether one is being an enlightened or not, right? because one could be accused of com committing this cardinal sin, Bhagachika. <laughs> That's all I have today. Thanks. Okay. I think that's all the time we have for today or tonight. Thank you for your comp company. I hope this meeting is useful to you and can help you advance in your practice. In the meantime, please stay safe, stay mindful, and keep on meditating. And if all goes well, I'll see you all at the same time next week. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Raja. Thanks, Anindi, Raja. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Raja. Thank you so much, Raja. Hi, everyone. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Good night. 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 Good night.